Welcome to Channel Waves, the podcast where channel leaders share success strategies, best practices, and emerging trends. Brought to you by Structured Web. Here's your host, Stephen Kellum. Welcome everybody to Channel Waves, Structured Web View into Everything Channel. I'm your host, Stephen Kellum, and very excited to have Tina Gravel joining me today. Welcome, Tina. Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Do I have any lipstick on my teeth? No, you don't have any. And by the way, we're going to leave that in, folks. Tina and I, it's been a minute, but we've done this. I think <laughs> your, 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 your teeth look, look great. So, so Tina and I have done several of these, so hang on. This should be interesting. It's no hold bars. We'll say whatever. She'll say whatever she wants. So we'll make it make it make. So Tina Gravel, Vice President, Global Head of Channel Sales at Quantexa. That's it. That's the name. Yeah, I got headquartered, headquartered in the UK, not as well known here in North America, but uh, coming up fast. We're a unicorn company. Um, with our recent round of funding, we were um, we are now a considered a unicorn, billion dollar um, high growth firm. Um, our our job and our lot in life and all of that, we have a platform which enables decision making, takes data, and um, transforms decision making with with data. We we wouldn't be anywhere without data, and you know, in this world, it just keeps proliferating and proliferating. But the, the the issue is the quality of the data and the questions you ask. And Juan Texa is the best company I've ever seen at being able to to help with that, to uh, help customers protect and optimize and grow, you know, with with their their information and then third party information like from one of uh, you know our clients like Moody's and so forth. So uh, because um, I asked her to join me for a couple of reasons. One is. She's in sales. And I interview a lot of people or work with a lot of people that are in marketing. You're in sales. And there's this whole thing going on between sales and marketing. So that was one thing. Mm-hmm. And two, your company is very interesting in what it does with data. So sales and marketing, they have to work together, I believe. Yes. Everybody's talking about it in the channel. So from your respect, for, excuse me, from your perspective, why is it so important that sales and marketing work together in the channel today? Well, in the olden days, five years ago, I was about to say you have to, you have to define that, don't you? You know, it used to be, you know, your funnel was your funnel, and your silos were your silos, and everything sort of worked that way. Things would come into the funnel that marketing would generate. You'd know what to do, and then you know sales would pick it up and and sell, right? And you you didn't have to be quite as aligned. Um, if you weren't sharing themes and ideas and, um, well, bad on you, but it wasn't, but, but I look at it now, it's no longer the funnel. It's the, what people call the life cycle of a customer, the, the some say flywheel. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, I, don't know. I like life <laughs> better than flywheel. I do too. I, I, I do. I'll start the flywheel. I like life. I do too. I do too, because it does flywheel to me is like, it seems like it moves and I'm not sure it moves it quite as fast as that. But without this continual discussion, shared goals, uh, you're going to have inconsistent responses. You're going to have mistakes made. You're going to have duplication of data. You're going to have problems with customer handoffs. Um, it's just no ROI or bad ROI or uh, downright fictional ROI, uh, as it could be. Um, said for many companies. So with that, um, you know, I would say that the, those are the biggest challenges with being not aligned. Um, when I talk about, you know, what are the biggest pitfalls or whatever, what what can happen? I can think back of a discussion. And by the way, this wasn't at a company I was at, so I don't want anybody that hears this running around upset that I'm talking about somewhere I used to work. I was at a meeting, uh, a big meeting with lots of companies and lots of um, heads of channels and alliances. And the the overriding sort of discussion and the controversy that kept coming up was all about attribution of leads. Right. 
Because if you're both support organizations, i.e. channel and marketing, to me are the support organizations of sales, right? You're both looking for who gets credit, right? And when. And and then you have the direct salespeople, many of which have large egos that want to take credit for the whole thing and don't want marketing or channels to be represented at all. It becomes a real nightmare and lots of fighting and lot and and some of these companies aren't that big. Come on. You should not be fighting with each other. You've got the world to fight with. Come on. So so that's on my mind today is that we only have so many leads. We have to do all this work up front because we know the customer is looking very, very early in the sales cycle now on his own or her own. They don't want to be talked to right away. They want they don't they they're gonna do 70% on their own, right? We know this. We have there are facts that show this. Well, if you're getting paid by the lead internally, or you're getting credit somehow by the lead internally, how do you decide who gets credit for it? Very interesting problem. And by the way, I don't have an answer for this. As great as I am. Well, here's my answer. I run both sales and marketing where I where I am. So I cannot think of a deal. If I have done attribution correctly and I take it far right. back, I'm, we can talk about your sales cycle. I'll talk about my sales. Right. Six months, easy, right? Right. Probably right. two years of building a relationship. If I really dig into it, I can find sales and marketing's footprints and handprints across almost Of every. course you can. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's got to be able, sure, you have to have metrics, right? What, right. What is an SQL? I mean, it's so funny. I don't right. Know. Yeah, and and how do we work it all back? And right. maybe it's a maturation thing. When I get older, as I've gotten older, I'm more interested in being a point guard and distributing and rising the tide versus just what right. me. I assume that if something does well that I've influenced, it's good for everything. Maybe it's an ego thing, but it, you know, actually, I don't know. Is it a well? Comment? To be fair, it's really it is. To be fair, I don't. I think it goes well beyond the ego when you're getting paid for it. Yeah, it's the okay. problem. And um, we have had that issue in marketing and sales and channel in many places that I've worked in where we've had a comp plan like that. I haven't always had a fight on my hands, okay. but um, but that's what it is. You and I, uh, coming from a different, let's say, generation than the folks that are just coming in now, and and all, I, yeah, I think our egos are different at this point in life. I really do. I'm I'm you're and you're right about the rising tide. If everybody benefits, everybody will rise, and it's better for the whole. But when you have companies that are trying to make sense out of how do we pay someone in channel, how do we pay someone, and 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 how do we give MDF? How do we apply that? Right. You're getting, then you get into these issues. And that's where I said, I don't have an answer because if I, if I were very simplistic, you know, and I'm not saying you're simplistic, but I could say, yes, everybody's involved at, you know, in, in, in all over the place. Right. But when somebody doesn't pick up the phone anymore or delete your email and they're looking at you at a white paper on an obscure site and you don't always get the cookie or the tracking anymore, right? If they say no, I'm not willing to be to let you know who I am. How do you know that the salesperson didn't send them to that website or the marketing person didn't send them or it's very very difficult. And I would say one of the reasons that I wanted to I I, I was offered this job and this company is fantastic. And so I took it, but my real desire was to do CRO work because I think that, you know, marketing sales and channels, if done right together, could be game changing. But I haven't seen a company do it right yet. And so I'm, you know, I'm very desirous of trying and it wouldn't be without difficulty to get them all working together and to get them working together well. But I think I've got two of them already figured out, and that is the alignment with channels and channel sales and sales direct sales. Okay. If that, to me, I think I think I know how to do that right, and then to be able to have the challenge of bringing in marketing the same way and having them all be on one team, 
that to me sounds like fun and sounds like a way you could really make some the world a better place if you could figure out how to do that better. I don't, I don't know companies that do it really well. You may because of what you're doing, but I haven't seen it. So you tell me. I think it's pretty broken, but I see it moving in that direction. I think, yeah. once again, it starts at senior leadership and you yes. know, it's like to listen and being willing to adapt, but then also maintaining some consistency from my perspective and then realizing if something's broke, fix it, but give it some time. I do see salespeople starting to understand that marketing isn't a competitor. It is in their hip pocket. This is what they need. And the easier marketer makes it to get to them to do that, the, be the better it is. Look, I think it's not only the comp plan, but it's the culture of an organization and yes. how people are praised and rewarded. It even goes down, it even goes down to recognition. So many marketers that I know, look, they just want to know that they got an assist. This is like hockey, right? Scoring a goal is great, but Wayne Gretzky was just as well known for his assist, right? Um, as a matter of fact, if you took all of Wayne Gretzky's goals away, he would still be the greatest scorer in the history of the NSL just on his assist. And he's the greatest hockey player ever. I'm sure somebody listening might disagree with me. I'd argue with that all day long. And I'm not even a hockey fan. So to me, that assist is becoming so important. I think the issue is we all have this technology out there and our, we've been able to track it so that you can get that marketing assist, right? And I think it's all starting to get there um, so, so you can start to, to do that a little bit better. Well, absolutely. It's, um, it's, it, it's one system, by the way, for PRM, for, for sales uh, forecasting and... You know, I think Salesforce wants to be the the system. I'm not sure it is. I don't. I'm not going to get into that controversy. Um, but you know, that's the other issue. Okay, if your systems are in silos, I don't care about your organization. Uh, if you can't share information easily, then there's to me there's there's a lot missing if you don't have the automation. And the right process. You've got to have the right process before you automate or, yeah, before you automate. Some some would say it's that's backward. Let's automate and then fix the process. I suppose you could do it that way, but I don't know. I've always been process first. I'm an automation guy. I've been selling some form of automation for 15 years. Me too. And I totally agree with you, right? It's, yeah. Don't automate for automate sake. Automation sake, I think you can do it on the same time, but if you've got a yes. bad program and a bad system, or you have what I've seen is you have automation over here in sales, you have automation over here in marketing, you have sales operations here, and once it's siloed, I got to tell you, in today's world, with APIs and integrations, I, I it's getting better, but there's really not much excuse for not sharing. The only reason not to share is internal conflict and lack of alignment from an internal perspective. And I'm yes. sorry, that would go to senior leadership on, you know, how are we, what are we measuring and rewarding and what are our, our KPI well, OKRs, right? Right. Well, come on, let's, let's also remember one thing and I'm, you know, I don't have my direct sales hat on right now. I have my channel hat on now. And it, this isn't about Quantexa or the company that I was just that I just left after seven years. But if you do not have at the top recognition that the indirect channel is critical to the business, force multiplier, leverage, all of that, you'll never get it either. Yeah, it's a constant struggle. Um, I am on a number of groups where women, um, and it's mostly women's groups now at this point in my career, but I hear them talking about the disrespect that their channel is facing and their their channel team faces. And it's because, and by the way, I was there for 15 years because all I did was direct, and I thought the channel was a joke. I thought they were ambulance chasers. I thought... 
And I think marketing has a similar disrespect in many cases because if you aren't giving leads on a regular basis to the kings of the company, direct sellers, you don't matter. Uh, who are the first people to get laid off, by the way, in companies? Okay, there's redundancy, but then when they have to cut hard, where do they go? They go to marketing and channel. Yeah. And channel. Okay. I don't know. What do you, what do you think they're doing in channel right now? In this oh, percent? yes. Well, oh, yeah. I've seen it. I have yeah. seen it with my own. Worse life. than the other side, yes. Worse than, than the direct. Because, yeah. because, because when you get bare bones, you still need some sellers. Yeah. Close business. Yeah. But the rest of them are just sort of um, nice to have in, in companies' minds. And that has to change. That has to change. That whole idea at the top has to change because if you are a business, a going concern, and you don't have that indirect channel wired down and you don't have marketing uh, ma marketing wired properly, you're going to suffer and you will never get beyond the crisis you're in, right? It's just never going to work. So get yourself recapitalized, put your organizations back in place. They don't have to be big. They could be one, two people, but you've got to have them because if you don't, you're going to suffer later on. You may not suffer today. You're already suffering. You had to lay all these people off, right? You're suffering. I get it. But it's, it, it is a very short-term fix, and then you'll be in trouble. You won't grow. You just won't grow. So, you know, there you have it. That's my, that's my uh, advice for those in crisis is that uh, I understand you have to cut off the arm in order to save the body, but you better get a prosthesis pretty quickly. Okay. I was going to ask you to, to wrap this up with, you know, one last thought, but it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be your, is that going to be your last that thought? That sounds very I'm, gory. I'm going you know, to get... give you an opportunity to do a different analogy on that one, but I'm going to leave that one in. Okay. Let's see. Um, Get yourself annual, uh, annual, uh, regular cadence with marketing. If you're in sales, and whether if you're in a regional sales role, get yourself with the regional, the field marketing team, but also meet with the head of marketing so that you're all in sync. And um, if you can do it in person, all the better. I was just at an SKO this week, and I will tell you that, you know, uh, COVID did us a disservice for so long. It felt like you're breathing again, you know, you're because you're a person again. You know, it's just so different. Um, yes, we do it on Zoom, but we don't do it the same way. And there's just something important about seeing and being with the person and not just the head, you know, on a video. Get together. If you do it a person, great. Start talking. Share your goals. Make sure your goals are in sync. Try to beat those silos down. All right, Tina, thanks for joining us today. Listeners, thanks for joining us. We are going to do a part two, and we're going to get deeper into technology, and we are going to chat about chat GPT. And AI. And AI. AI in general. And then we're going to talk about what it really means for the channel. Thank you for joining us again. What's the best way for people to reach you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, my email address is Tina Gravel, all one continuous word there, T-I-N-A-G-R-A-V-E-L, at Quantexa.com. I also have a website, TinaGravel.com, if you're just looking for me and nothing to do with my business. All right. Thank you. Once again, thank you. Thank you, listeners, viewers. Have a great day. Thank you.